Hello, it's me, Jess. Welcome to my channel. And today we are doing a lovely reading on why are people thankful for you? I love doing this reading this time of year and I just feel like it's a good pick me up for all of our souls to know why we're loved and why we're appreciated and what it is that people see and connect within you and why they just are thankful that they ran into you, that they interact with you, um, why they're grateful to have you in their lives. So with that being said, there are three piles here. Pile number one, pile number two, pile number three. I will put the picture up and I will um, see you at your reading, but keep in mind if you're drawn to more than one pile, of course, um, go. you can choose more than one pile. So um, I'll see you at your reading. Okay, so pile number one, why are people grateful for you? This is such a beautiful energy and it's also not one that's easy to pull off because I feel you have um, a beautiful blended energy of being warm, loving, nurturing. You really have like a motherly energy. However it is that you connect with that. This is coming off more communal though. Um, like you are like just a protective mother hen, but at the same time, it's like you see very deeply into things, into systems, into situations. Also at the same time, I feel like you know your place here around that. So even even though you have this like depth of knowledge or depth of understanding about maybe emotions or somebody's um you know family life or mother secrets there's something here where it's like you can be very trusted with secrets um you may even be like very intuitive but there's a sense that either you know a lot or you intuitively pick up on a lot you do not like invade or violate people's space you kind of you you know your place here and around these situations and you handle it very gracefully but at the same time very powerfully there's a sense here of you really helping people grapple and wrestle with really really difficult issues especially people who maybe have experienced some kind of domestic unrest is what i want to say like how, how i want to describe that as maybe issues with family here with the moon card it also could be some kind of like home disturbance or home disruption on whatever scale that is it could have been because there was something secret some weird power dynamics hidden you know um a b u s e i hate that we have to spell that out but i don't know what i'm allowed to say on youtube and i've heard people getting in trouble for using that word but there might have been some of that hidden undercurrent kind of going on in home environments or um, something here like that and you like either know the warning signs I'm hearing you know it when you see it um, or you help people get out of that situation you literally could work for some kind of a center you could be a therapist absolutely you could be somebody who's just like a very loving friend another kind of strange thing that I'm getting is um, maybe you run a place that is like um, once you know convicts like get out of jail or something they come and they work for this kitchen you know or something like that some of you could certainly volunteer at soup kitchens or or something like that there's a sense here of you working or volunteering or in some way giving your skill set your time and your emotional space to help free people and you don't it's not like you do it for them and you know that you don't do it for them it's like you you hold a really solid space um that with but you also have skill set and you offer insight um and things but again there's a sense of you being very well balanced with knowing knowing where is too far and allowing people to come to you and that kind of a thing um 
but you help people move on from very difficult periods in their life. Um, because a lot of these people feel like they need to be really, really strong. I also think that there's something about you where people who are normally quite guarded because they don't want to appear vulnerable. These are people who feel like they need to be in like a strong career space, you know, or something like that, or they have to have this certain image. And I feel like the image is like a sun, you know, like I have everything all together. I'm a career person. I'm independent. I'm a leader, you know, those kind of things. Or maybe just that I'm vibrant. I'm healthy. I'm sunshiny all the time. I'm very self-contained. I'm creative. You know, all these people that have these like really beautiful um, qualities to them. But the, the engine for that is kind of like, um, I'm kind of just getting the, the image of like an artist that maybe doesn't know that they're an artist yet, or they're still um, grappling with their past, but there's a sense of feeling like they always need to be on edge or they always need defense to be defensive. But it's like, whenever they're around you, when they come into your office, um, you know, something like that, they can just let their guard down. They know that they can trust you. I feel like you are a vault baby locked down, um, with certain secrets. You don't really play power games. Um, you don't use private information for your own hidden agendas. You really are all about giving people the tools, the knowledge to set themselves free. And I just feel like you, you have done it here yourself. That's there's a sense of people seeing you as having some hard won knowledge here, maybe because you've been through some of these similar themes of yourself. And I'm taught, I mean, I don't want to list them all out here on YouTube, but these are like heavy crisis themes that go right to the heart of a person, right to the emotionality of a person. And that you're somebody who has grieved and you are somebody who's found your hermit energy. Maybe you've even had to walk away from a country of origin, a home, a family, um, in some way, or at least emotionally distance yourself in order to find your own freedom, but then also in order to cultivate your own wisdom. And there's a sense of you not just landing on your feet in that regard, but becoming the empress, becoming someone who, the, you know, the emperor and the empress, those are like top dogs, really, like of the major arcana. This is heavy hitting major arcana energy. And so you're somebody who is very well-rounded. You have so much to give and you are just kind of like this bountiful, protective space and you're well-rounded in a lot of different areas here of your life. And people understand that you look like the empress. So again, I feel like maybe you are very abundant. You're very beautiful. Um, you're very Venusian, you know, you're again, good in conversation, equal give and take. You're somebody who doesn't dominate all the space in the room. You leave space to listen. Or again, there's a sense of like listening with within with like the inner ear, you know, of listening, you know, that I always think about the song we used to sing in Bible school. It's like, listen with your eyes, listen with your eyes and see all you want to see. Um, so it, there's a sense of you really hearing the emotionality, the undercurrent, picking up on what people can't exactly say, but not using it again as a weapon, which I think a lot of these people are used to, using it instead to cushion, to comfort, and to free, and to encourage people to release their own chains. Um, people really want to be a part of your family, but this is a funny family because I feel like this is, this looks to me like a coven, doesn't it? Um, or like, you know, just a group of women or, um, you know, very like, again, socially equipped people, um, even if it's like not women, but it's like, yeah, people want to celebrate with you, come around, but I also get the sense that they're coming here for your protection, for your leadership, for your guidance, um, you know, that kind of thing. They just want to be a part of and around the spaces that you inhabit, the things that you build, um, the things that you say, the things that you do. I'm, I get the sense here that you've, you've left some of these people behind, but it has taught them invaluable lessons. Um, it has helped them to do their own shadow work and they want a reconciliation with you. They want some kind of, I'm hearing dream vacation. <laughs> That's like such a random thing. Um, but if you left a homeland or something, then maybe it's like to go back there or maybe that would resonate or make sense with you. Um, and you help people see things differently as well. You give people a different perspective, especially these people where, um, you know, there's a lot of Capricorn 10th house visibility energy. And it, like I said, it's coming through in the, the sun energy of like the only kind of strength is masculine strength is what I'm hearing. Even if this is, if these are females, which I think a lot of them are that are around you, you know, um, the only kind of strength is that sun independent leadership strength. You have shown people, and this is, this is truly how you come off in the world. You may even have a business, um, a reputation, some kind of visibility that involves this moon energy, but it's, you know, when you think of the moon, you think about somebody who's kind of porous and receptive and intuitive, but this is a strength. This is somebody who comes across as like a super empath. I think for a lot of you, there's something here about you giving people a different perspective on a very painful ending, a very painful betrayal, um, or on some kind of betrayal energy, something that confused them here in the past. Again, a lot of you could be therapists, but like you're really, really good therapists. And I just want to say this, it's like, 
Um, I'm not a therapist, but I, I have taken a lot of psychology classes, my degrees in psych and everything. And a big thing about like what therapists are trained to do is to be really, really good mirrors. And a lot of that is being a clear mirror and not putting your own self, you know, like your whole aura taking up the space. That's what I mean. It's like, you're very good. I'm hearing like psychic surgery almost where like you're good, you're receiving things, you're taking in a lot of information. And then the things that you say, they are short, sweet to the point, they hit just the right place at just the right time in order to release, in order to kind of set something free. And it might be painful, but it's painful and they never feel it again. It's like, it just comes up in the moment. It's like, we're going to deal with this. I've created this very safe container and people absolutely know that they can trust you. And then what is clear is actually made or what is unclear is actually made clear and then this ten of swords turns to this ten of cups of happiness vibrancy and they an abundance and new beginnings and um making change where change needs to be made like but this is um it's really really beautiful and like i said i feel like you're good at encouraging people to take like rests um, or like the out breath, you know, and time to really reorient and readjust themselves and to see themselves and their situation and their circumstance as a gift is what I'm hearing. Like, but you know, in a, in an entirely new way. And I think you might bring a sense of enlightenment here, um, about things that were hidden. So I'm hearing like things in themselves. Um, what am I getting the, um, oh my gosh, uh, willful ignorance, like some kind of willful ignorance that they might have been falling prey to um, about themselves, about people in their environment that were not serving them or it was, you know, like very contentious um, or something here like that, places where they were non-traditional. Um, and that's the other thing because moon Pluto is a combination where oftentimes these can be people that hold the shadow traits of their family group of their collective but these people who feel like the black sheep of the family or they feel ousted or outcasted or not understood in their family of whatever because to me i'm viewing family almost as like you know those like russian dolls where it's like there's the bigger one and then you open it it's the same thing but the smaller one and then it's like layers kind of like that where people feel like weirdos in their country in their community in their family in their um whatever it is, they feel maybe there's like an island of misfit toys around you because there's also a sense that nothing surprises you. So, I mean, I don't know what it is that you do for a living, but I just feel like maybe you've seen things, you know, or you've heard so many things. You've certainly lived through certain things yourself where nothing really surprises you. And I, I'm getting the scene from um, Sex in the City where I think it was Miranda and she was on the phone with with one of the, the other ladies and she was like, I just pulled a piece of cake out of the trash and ate it. <laughs> and then the person on the phone with her was just like, well, we all have our bad days, okay? <laughs> you know, it's just, there's no judgment. It's like, yeah, of course you did because sometimes life is hard. Just if you need to sit on the floor for a while, do it, you know, watch your stomach. <laughs> you know, you might have you might have some issues later, but you'll get through this. You know what I mean? There's you have that kind of an energy. And again, it's this protective space, this maybe island of misfit toys um, where everybody's family to you or everybody's safe with you. And you can see the darkness in people because you've seen the darkness of yourself and you can sit with them and hold them in their lowest of places. And I mean like ugly crying. And if you haven't, I think you've done this literally with certain people. Um, but even if you haven't, there's still that vibe around you that if they went into the ugly cry and there was literal snot like kind of coming down on their face and you had to wipe away their tears that they would would not have to feel any shame around you the next day because you've been there yourself and you just know how cathartic it is. Um, but like I was saying too, it's like moon Pluto, Pluto, you know, every family, every group, it kind of like has its um, secrets and the things that maybe it's not so proud of. It doesn't have to be so nefarious, but I'm kind of just getting the sense of like, see, this mostly works. It mostly functions. I mean, yeah, sure. We have to like throw out some of the extra food and some of the, you know, but it mostly works. Like, look over here, look at this. And you are the one who, um, maybe is a constant reminder of that things don't always work out or things don't always um, suit everyone. I think there might be something about you that sticks out like a sore thumb in regards to groups, family, home spaces that you are a part of. And I think it's been like maybe people have like they encourage a type of willful ignorance in around your energy like they don't want to have to see the way that they've treated you i think a lot of you've been like degraded downtrodden for being different for being too deep for being too um and maybe like oh you take things too seriously until if and until it's like all of this depth to you actually serves a purpose and i think some of you have made a career out of um 
dealing in transformative spaces and actually like freeing people. And there's definitely a sense to your energy that you don't sit on the surface of things. You're not two dimensional. Um, you don't just want to play the motions and get the accolades. The, the stuff that you say, the presence you have, all of it that kind of like works together as a whole, it really works. It really like actually gets in there to where it needs to. And people actually feel seen, feel accepted um, around, around your energy, because I'm getting the real sense that it's like before people have met you, they have felt stuck in some way and they feel embarrassed about it or like self-protective. And maybe even some of these people, it's like all of these shame feelings and stuff, they are overwhelmed by it. it like it blocks off their own intuition and it just kind of becomes this downward spiral. But because you've gone through this, you see it. And again, like you move towards this freedom energy with the, um, I'm just feeling like there could be a place um, or if there's not, it's like, you would be so good at this. Like you, you create, I'm hearing you are the space. You just hold such beautiful space and grace. I'm hearing space and grace. That's what they call you in the higher realms is what they're saying. Space and grace. Do you want to send space and grace in? Um, because I'm hearing you make a space holy. You like consecrate holy ground. So you can walk into like, you know, a coals and nothing wrong with coals, but you know, and the space around you, it becomes, um, just better because you're there and because people feel safe. Um, this is like Taurus energy. I think that there's excellent giving and receiving. Um, I think people love it when they can give to you as well. Um, like it just feels good and it feels nice for them. But yeah. And, um, I think that maybe you bring these kind of like buried issues around, um, feelings, this really is looking like a therapist to me, but um, again, there could be some sort of a communal aspect, especially around functioning dysfunctions that people don't want to look at and people just kind of think that they have to stuff down and have ruined their whole lives. And I'm hearing some of these people literally have health conditions that um, are linked to their emotional psychic space. And like whenever you like, when, I don't know, it's like through helping process emotions, purge, I'm hearing the word purging it, um, just getting it out. Um, and they never thought that they could even just engaging with that. It's like people have really, even like mental, um, unhappiness, depression, it really actually works to like, and I'm just hearing self-forgiveness, like here for people, you are such an inspiration for so many people as being somebody strong, somebody real, somebody authentic, somebody deep, somebody who has been through some stuff, somebody who has even, I just feel like nothing surprises you. That's like really what I want to say. I mean, um, like there's just a sense that you're not precious in that way, you know, or that you don't live a life that's too elevated above other people that you could never relate. There's just a sense that you are, I'm hearing like infinitely relatable. Um, and you connect people here with their purpose. You just help really help them, um, get online. So yeah, let's just see anything else that people really want to highlight here. Um, okay. I'm, I just saw the rebel card and I am getting this rebel energy, but you know, purpose is at the bottom of the deck and liberator. That's what the purpose is. Liberator, freeing yourself and others from outmoded beliefs, releasing negative thought patterns. And that ties into the rebel card because challenges authority to affect social change, reject spiritual systems that do not serve inner needs. You reject things. And I'm hearing like you reject the pageantry because a lot of people just, um, I feel like they want to seem like they're helping or like collect accolade or something for, um, doing something, but it's really just this like empty motions that they're doing, but you actually like do the stuff. And I think you're super casual about it too. Um, but it's your purpose. You know what you're here to do. And then you help to free these other people releasing negative, um, negative thought patterns. It's beautiful. This is a really, really beautiful energy. Um, and then the death card is below it here. I'm learning that endings are merely beginnings and I'm hearing like, I'm learning. It's like whatever these people have been through. Cause I think some of these people that are around you, they've been through an awful lot. Okay. And it's like, I'm learning to see it as something different. I'm learning to make peace with it or to accept it. My husband said, he keeps saying this, like, um, here in the last couple of weeks, he's like, I'm realizing that some things, um, you know, when you don't feel like there's really anything that you can do, it really is just about accepting it. Just kind of sitting with it long enough, looking it down, staring it down to just kind of make peace with it. And either you're helping, you can sit with some, somebody in the muck um, and not judge them, not even energetically. There's nothing about you that makes people feel judged and um, moving away from that. 
And I'm hearing resolution, like actually helping people to see things differently, gain resolution in order to springboard into the next phase of their life. And I think a lot of this, it has to do with like finding themselves, listening to their intuition. And then there's something here about career and being making their own self more vis visible, their authentic self. And um, I'm hearing freedom from fear. Um, or Fear of Freedom, Eric Fromm. That might be a book that you really resonate with. So that's what I have for you guys, pound number one. This is really, really strong, really beautiful energy. This is leadership energy. This is feminine leadership energy. Even if you're a man, this is like very strong, nurturing, um, caring, well-rounded, abundant. If you need it, I got it. Kind of an energy within. There's a sense of you being very um, open, well-balanced, and welcoming while at the same time. Uh, it reminds me of the, the phrase that is like, speak softly, but carry a big stick and you'll go far. That's your energy. You speak softly, but you carry a big stick. And the stick that you carry is intelligence. It's depth of knowledge. It's, um, there's some level of like strategy within the scorpionic realms. And you're the hermit that kind of guides people down the river sticks. You are excellent here at this. And I am so happy to have you here on my channel. Thank you so much. Um, and I hope you have a really good Thanksgiving. Bye guys. Yes. All right. Pile number two. Why are people grateful for you? This is such beautiful energy. And I think people, a lot of different people are grateful for you for a lot of different reasons. And I just want to say that up front. So if you get tired of hearing about how great you are and you kind of zone out halfway through the reading, I just want you to know that you are that kind of a person where you really make the difference for people here. Pile number two, you really, really do. Um, and I think it's because I want to say that you have a really good engine that can be kind of placed into a lot of different areas and still be successful and bring a lot of um, fruitfulness and value and balance and harmony to the table. And I think that you've really actually had to be led a lot in your life by your own interests, your own um, creative talents and abilities, because you are the type of person that could be successful in a lot of different areas and a lot of different arenas in life. And maybe you have been, honestly, because I think a lot of people would describe your energy as being very interesting. Um, creative, harmonious. And you know what they say that interesting people are interested. And I think that you are interested in a lot of different arenas, areas. You might follow a lot of different thought leaders or philosophers or something like that, where you're constantly just kind of checking in to see what they're saying about how they're thinking. And because you take an interest in so many areas and, and so many different fields and interests and create creative endeavors, 
you have this big broad mind here that is something that is really really coming through a big broad mind where you have a lot of different creative interests talents and abilities and i think a lot of you work in professions or you're working towards working in professions where you can actually put that big broad mind to work um, a lot of you would be really really good in advice giving professions even like some of you may already do this but others of you i think maybe you are working towards this and i think that there is there's something about your energy where you never stop learning or you never stop striving or something like that so you may be in a career field or um, have built up a hobby to the point where a lot of people would have stopped building themselves if that makes a difference um, or if that makes sense and i, I want to say that i think you really do make the difference here for people and it's because whatever it is that you do and that you put your mind to um, especially in career but also in terms of hobbies and a lot of you may be um, you have worked your way up to, to like a hobby that you've had, you've worked this up to a career, or this is like whatever profession that you're in, I you don't take this like straight view of that, very traditional view of like, this is our um, profession. You know how like they say the Western world produces a lot of specialists, but not generalists. I think you have this kind of specialist energy that is really um, informed by and appreciative of a really solid generalist approach because you're, um, I think this would be something where it's like cross-disciplinary or you're genuinely interested in the overlap between your field and other fields. And so you have this broad like umbrella sort of um, feeling here around you. And a lot of you, um, I don't know if you watched me shuffle these cards, but they were like way over here and I had to like move them all the way over here. And then even then they were just like all kind of crazy. And so I had to put them back and as I was, putting them together, I was like, I think this is what pile number two does really well. And, and very naturally, you just kind of have a knack for this. And I wonder if it's kind of annoying for you sometimes, because I think maybe you just have this way of looking at the world around you, whether you're focused in on a, you know, like a person or a thing or a space, like specifically, maybe you do this for a living, or you just kind of walk into a space and you just naturally pick up on how to bring things back into balance, beauty, harmony, and alignment. Those words are really, really sticking out. And again, regardless of what you do for a living, I think that you kind of make the difference in a lot of arenas because um, like some of you very well could be like an internal deck or uh, an in what do they call it? Interior decorator, um, where you can just walk into a space and kind of know how everything needs to be balanced out. You need something taller over there, something shorter over there, something raised off the ground over there, and all these colors kind of naturally blend together and how to work with the lighting. But even if you don't do that for a living, you still may just have that knack in your space where it's simple, it's clean, it's functional, but it's also beautiful and harmonious. I am hearing feng shui. So I think a lot of you, I think you're a human version of feng shui. <laughs> Um, where maybe you do like to pull those things into your space around you. But I think like it, it, this is very holistic. You apply these principles kind of overall in your life and in your interactions with other people. I also really think that people um, like having conversations with you. They like one-on-one -on -one conversations with you because I think that you always have, like I said, something interesting to say or value that you bring to the situation, even if it's listening. Because like I said, I think that you are interested in a lot of things. And so when other people come alive and they start talking about the things that they're passionate about, even if it was never something you thought about before, when somebody's speaking passionately about something, you just naturally tune in and listen and you take something away from the conversation and it makes people feel important and beautiful and um, interesting and creative themselves and that like spirit is actually really glad that you do this here for people because um, it does increase people's confidence I think you may not realize that you could have actually um, I, I keep wanting to say this word this phrase make the difference you may have made the difference for somebody and just through like your interest in shining a light on how their passions were important and how good they were at those passions you may have actually changed somebody's career path or changed the way like giving them the confidence around their skill set or something because you noticed how much they loved it and how good they were at whatever this um whatever this was now um i think a lot of you have natural leadership capability and this is going to come in a couple of different forms because i think some of you are social leaders like just very naturally like especially if you're early on in your career path or new at a company or something like that 
Um, I think your ability to kind of lead from the back and be a social leader is currently being noticed here by a boss um, or by somebody who is in a more traditional leadership position. They're recognizing that, hey, wherever pile number two goes, balance and harmony follows. People just naturally start getting along. Um, really good results kind of come, but this is like, this would be somebody who does actually value atmosphere and having a healthy tone and a good, um, you know, just a good vibe like around and, and values that. And I think maybe doesn't have the time or the bandwidth to be able to do that here themselves. So this is something that they love to delegate in the space around them is um, they pick out people who are very cooperative. I'm hearing coordinated um, and uh, just like bring a lot of this balance and harmony and, and brings up a good tonal environment around them. They, they value that. And so they've made it their business to kind of be able to spot these people where those, um, little oases kind of just naturally crop up. And you're definitely one of those people. Now, if you're, if, you still could be like a social leader, but I think some of you are actually in positions of leadership. And the way that you wear leadership is actually very inspiring here for a lot of people. And I'm getting that this is on multiple levels. So some of you just like, you may handle your remit really, really well, but you make the difference for people in the sense that I think a lot of the people who come to work for you, are used to being like overworked and underappreciated and just cogs in the wheel and they're not allowed to express their own creativity or their own values. And they really appreciate that you're the type of person who shines a light on what they're interested in and what they're creative. Like, I think you may be the type of leader that is like, okay, here's this person's talents. Here's this person's talents. Here's this person's talents. Here's what we can naturally do with that. Instead of trying to put, like put everybody in a, a type of like ca pre-made category or something, you're really good at kind of moving things on the fly and recognizing um, the the human value and human, literally like human resource that you have in front of you, the creative resource and really trusting people um, to do that. And there is a good balance here with um, responsibility with this pile as well. Cause I think first of all, um, you take on a lot of responsibility and you do this well, like you can be trusted and you, um, I think you're hard workers and especially recently, I think for a lot of you, this is really helpful for you to hear just at this current time. Cause I don't think it's been easy. Um, I'm hearing the word slog, <laughs> like it's just been a slog. Maybe you've had to work long hours. Um, and you've been taking on, I feel like this is um, a lot of like little beginnings or something where you might be really good at starting things. And I am hearing that word propagate. And some of you very well could have a green thumb, but this could also be metaphorical because you are broadly intelligent, because you're okay with delegating and because you're such a good leader and everything, um, things you can kind of start the little saplings in whatever way you do. And then once you get it up to a robust enough place, you kind of hand it off and you're okay delegating. You're like, this is robust. Let's see what you can do with this, you know? Um, and so right now you could have been um, going through a time where you've had to kind of take on these like little beginning types of things where you, you know this is actually where you're good. And people really do notice this because I also feel like whatever it is that you do, and again, I think this is in a social context, but also in a career sense, you help people sort through confusion, figure out what's going on behind the scenes that they can't see or that they don't understand that maybe has been undermining them, undermining their creativity, undermining their progress, undermining their own homeostasis. And this very well could be in a body, like some of you could be body workers or like you work in some form of healthcare, but I feel like if you work in healthcare, this would be something that is like wellness based or it is very, broad, you know, um, and either you could be like a massage therapist, a chiropractor, an acupuncturist, an acupressurist, um, something like that, or you work with these kind of people, or even people like me who read tarot or astrology, where it's like this holistic, I'm hearing, um, craniosacral, um, you know, something like that, where it's like this more holistic, um, okay, I'm hearing Chinese medicine and herbs. Yeah. You would be interested like in all of these different kind of things where either you know you just take an interest and you learn about them to a pretty like large extent yourself because i'm they're showing me like you know how they they say that um you know just enough about something to do damage you go past that where you know a lot about things um and maybe you're not like a full expert in all these different areas but you know enough about it to be functional um in a lot of these like different arenas and um people really feel like you know you highlight 
things that they can't see, you know, so that they can get their wishes, they can get their dreams, so that they can feel empowered. Um, and if you do work in healthcare, there is something here about pain management. So it's like people don't want to feel pain anymore. And maybe, I don't know, maybe you tell them they have to do certain things that they feel dis is disgusting or um, painful or they don't want to do it. But it's like once they do it, they actually get results. There is a sense here of um, you bringing results um, to whatever it is. So people trust you. And that still works as a metaphor, even if you're not working in like health or wellness. That metaphor of like acupressure, for sure, where you know exactly where to push and how much pressure and where the joints are. And, you know, you just you're really, really good. You're, you're broad minded here. You're a really great person to have in a leadership position. And yeah, there is a sense here of, um, and spirit is here like in a big way as well, where I think that, um, you have a lot of admirers and this could be in a physical sense as well. And I do feel pile number two. I don't know why I want to say this to you, but I feel like some of you have not been feeling pretty attractive, um, even like successful, because I think you're going through a time where you've had to put in a lot of effort and a lot of work. You could be burning it at both ends. And sometimes when we get in that way of being, it's like our self care can kind of go by the wayside. And, um, you know, maybe you're not like, I don't know, plucking your eyebrows or keeping up on your hair or something like you normally would. But there are people even like there are people who find you attractive, you know, and I, I think that you're just not recognizing it because of all this working energy that you're putting in um, here just at the current time. But a lot of people do find you attractive, but even still you're an inspiration and a lot of people are admiring here of your energy. And even if they don't, I think you have a uniqueness about you because you're the intersection of all of your interests and creativities and hobbies. But at the same time, I think you've managed to go down. Like, uh, there's something here that I think you might be known for, you know, and it could be some kind of social leadership here even as well. Like this is just a person that you want in your social group. It even could be that, um, or beauty or, um, something here like this. And so even it's kind of like a given that your energy cannot be replicated because you are like your uniqueness is so apparent, but you still are an inspiration for people to pursue their interests in the same way that you did. And their interests will be different than yours, but they're interested and curious to see like where their nexus point is and what their expression is and how their interests are all going to come together for them. But what spirit is saying is like, I think you can kind of polarize people sometimes because there's also also people who are jealous of you and send you a lot of evil eye energy. And if you've been feeling that recently, then maybe you do want to get like a, an evil eye talisman or um, artwork or something to keep up some something here like that. Not that you need to worry about it, but spirit is actually really grateful here that you do this because that evil eye jealousy energy is really just distorted praise. And the distortion does not exist in your energy. The distortion list um, exists in it's the log that is that is in these people's own eye where they get salty and they get jealous. I also think a lot of you could be very beautiful. Um, I feel I keep every time I say that I feel like you guys are like, oh, I don't feel it right now. Um, but you really are. And so I think a lot of people are inclined to say, well, pile number two wouldn't have gotten that far if they weren't beautiful, if they weren't. They try to reduce it to something very um, cheap or uh, surface level or something like that. But you can back it up here. Pile number two, you can back it up here. And so spirit is saying you really shine a light on what's going on internally for people in their own hearts. And it's a service that um, is truly invaluable. And I think that um, there is also here something about the energy of forgiveness, but that, that you encourage or bring about. I acknowledge that harboring resentment blocks the flow of love. That blockage of flow, I feel like you're good at seeing that. You, there's something here where you're very clear in your vision and how it is that you're seeing what's going on around you. And so anything that is inhibiting flow, and I'm hearing like chi, um, or like obviously the physical body, there's a lot of things where there could be blockages or you know something like that. So again, like with the, the healthcare thing, but also just like blocking the flow of the space, blocking the flow of the sunlight. Like I just think that you're good at flow and harmony in a social setting as well. And um, so that's a part of it. But also in terms of forgiveness, I think you're um, a very action oriented person or you've recently done something where you're like trying to turn your ship around is what I'm getting because spirit is also here strong in this reading. That's what I was getting ready to say because spirit in like a very personal aspect, spirit wants to say that spirit is like, I'm hearing indebted in, and in gratitude, not so much indebted, but just in gratitude to your energy and to a certain decision that you've made that has flown out, flown, um, 
you know, seeped out and affected other decisions. I think that you've been making a series of decisions here in your own life um, and maybe in your relationships here with other people that have been in like the energy of cooperation and value and harmony, beauty and peace. And it might have like meant that you've taken on some extra responsibilities here because a lot of times when you do honor other people in terms of like well we need to make sure that other people can do what it is that they need to do it means more responsibility especially up front for the leader and whoever is doing that and a lot of times it gets overlooked not that i'm speaking from experience or anything i'm kidding i totally have <laughs> um like just felt like oh we need to be honoring certain people and then it's absolutely just stuffed me into the dirt on the back end um but it's totally worth it in the end and i feel like you um feel the same way here and you've been making a series of decisions is what it's coming across as but it all stems from one decision that you've made in your life here and I don't know what this was but it, it's it's in terms of like turning the ship around and it is in terms of forgiveness here as well um, and I feel like it may be hidden that those are themes but it's been like a really big deal. And I think whatever this main decision was, it put you on some kind of a new track and it was sort of a declaration to the universe that you wanted to work in harmony with spirit and towards bringing about spirit's goals and spirit's fruition. And spirit, as we know, deals with people, deals with living organisms, you know, rather than just like money or something like that. And a lot of you may have gone down a path in your past that promised it's kind of more in alignment with that devil energy because you would be a prime target for this here, pile number two, because I keep wanting to describe your energy as like a battery or an engine where it's like you are going to achieve your goals here in the world. You are going to be successful to whatever degree you want because you've got everything that would be required to do that. And so I just feel like the way I want to describe it is like the forces of good, the forces of evil, they both kind of want to pull you over to their side so that they can plug you in to like whatever it is they're trying to achieve. And you may have actually been tempted down a path of um, that devil energy, that worldly um, that worldly success of money and assets, that like very two dimensional mon like version of what it means to be abundant or what it means to be successful. And I just want to remind you that that devil energy means making decisions that prioritize short term gains gains over long term happiness, and then it focuses on visibility and success and things like that. So some of you could have been in this kind of an energy, but what I'm noticing here from this card is yes, this is a ten of pentacles. So there is like a lot of wealth a lot of abundance, a lot of assets. I think you were blocking yourself off, which is not your typical energy. I, I think you like, and people like from you, interacting with you one-on-one -on -one because um, first of all, it is very helpful and something like moves and you have something interesting to say. But I think that you're somebody that, again, like maybe you seem important or you seem inspiring. And so when you actually take the time to connect with people one-on-one, -on -one, it really does make an impression like for the better. Um, but anyway, so I think that and maybe you were blocking yourself off here as, um, as exclusive in some way. And I think this may have been from the influence of a certain or multiple sig um, significant others that you had here in your life. Cause I'm seeing that you have undergone some endings here recently, and maybe that's why you've been working so hard. It could have been up to three, um, major endings here in your life. And I'm hearing like it had to get broken down because it wasn't aligned in, it was not in alignment with your own higher selves vision for you as a human and what it wants to accomplish here through your human life. And so in order for you to build, and I, you know, in order for you to build something truly valuable and um, I don't know, just in harmony with that like higher self's vision, whatever this was had to be um, broken down. And this is where I just wanna show you what's on the bottom of the deck here. Those of you who are on Patreon and you picked pound number three this last time, you should recognize this energy. And we've been getting this even on the channel of, um, it's been again in pile number three, because I feel like there was at least one major one-to-one -one relationship. So this could have been your romantic partner that encouraged this, like we are better than everybody else. We need to make ourselves exclusive. You were never meant to be exclusive. You kind of set yourself apart, but you were always meant to be like salt of the earth and really accessible and like um, just kind of like, I think your energy is like you're a regular person that because you do that's kind of been like lifted up, you know, you don't take yourself too seriously, but I do feel like there's a person here, um, who 
is conniving and they're very strategic and they like to compete with you and with other people. I think um, we've been seeing this energy a lot recently, but they're prone, I'm hearing they're prone to violence, they're prone to anger, um, they're prone to competition and they are a betrayer. And I feel like you have maybe recently made a decision to let this person go. And spirit is saying, yes, 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 yes. That is what we want you to do. And it's this decision to let this person that has been I'm hearing a negative advisor, a negative influence here in your life that has really brought you nothing but um, like they seemed like they were um, leading you down a path of prosperity here. But I'm just noticing the five of pentacles are the, are the flags here. Five of pentacles is a sign of lack. And it's, you know, that um, in Monsters, Inc. when it's like, we're number two, we're number two. There's something here like that where there's a castle and all this abundance, but the flags you were waving were like, we're full of lack, we're full of lack. I'm not trying to like, you know, I feel like you understand this now and you've started to kind of turn it around. And I think whatever it was, it was kind of nuanced and maybe difficult to see. Because um, if you were just looking by worldly success or worldly attainment, maybe it did seem like you had everything, but I think you still felt really empty because I'm thinking of like the spiritual version of success and especially in astrology, it's very holistic. It's things like having good, healthy, productive relationships. It is um, uh, having healthy, like good family. It's having happiness, joy, abundance, health, safety, vitality. Um, those are things that come from spirit. And I feel like this decision to leave this kind of energy and to not chase after things like via the wrong methods and um, where the ends justifies the means, not going down that path anymore. Spirit is coming through and saying that is going to be the decision, the single decision that's going to impact your fortune the most. Because I think by turning away from this, even if it's been like really difficult, because spirit's saying this will be a painful ending, but it does need to happen. And when you, because you, you're going to have to do it in this life or in another life, moving away from this um, terrible, horrible, no good energy. You're gonna have to do it now or later. And once you do that, it's like your family is going to prosper in these ways, these gifts of the spirit, where things are happy, cooperative, productive, and your children are seeing healthy relationships demonstrated and what to do when a relationship is not healthy, um, that kind of thing. Now this, this primary relationship, like I said, it could have been up to three different arenas because what I'm also seeing where spirit wants to come in and praise you is um, there's been some kind of an authority complex that has been passed down in your family via the paternal line. So this is like, you know, not to sound dramatic, but this is like family curse energy. And you probably would have felt this. And I'm hearing like your soul was handpicked for this, um, to come up in this family environment and to really turn this around. And a lot of you are complying here with that higher self plan. Um, but I think that you had, this is showing up as some kind of a father figure. So it doesn't have to be a father, but it was definitely some kind of father figure here where there was this authoritative energy around. And that person, I think there was a lot of criticism and negative feedback and you were held to some kind of perfectionist standard. The goalposts would always move. And instead of really teaching you how to build a life and how to be flexible and how to make decisions and okay, this door closed, this is what I would do here in this situation. They just instead thought that fatherhood um, and guidance was just holding you to a certain standard, not really giving you a lot of information and then just berating you when you didn't like meet it. Anyways, it was this painful voice that internalized itself as your own, um, you've been dealing here with the Saturnian energy and Saturn really becomes our internal, our parental internalized voice. So I think that you've had this kind of voice that's been keeping you small for a while that you're never good enough. It's all these things that was echoed here by this paternal line. And I think that because this has been so internalized and this is part of what you came here to get embroiled in and to deal with and turn around for yourself like in a healthy way. And this is what spirit is saying you're doing. You're actively doing this. Um, is I think what happened is that you replicated this authority complex in your life and especially in the primary one-to-one -one relationships that you inhabit and that you have felt comfortable with because for whatever reason, our limbic system, even if something is not the best, just because it's comfortable and our brain kind of has learned how to navigate that environment, we can find ourselves replicating those experiences. But you're again, like you're turning this around because I think that you, you sort of saw this authority complex and you thought, okay, I've got two options here. Either I run the show and I become the leader and I dominate other people. And I kind of do the same thing that my father did to me or this, this paternal figure where I expect perfectionism. I just try to, I, I think it's leadership to hold people to a, a high standard and then just yell at them when they don't make it instead of 
getting in there and shining that light because you're perfectly capable of figuring out like what's going wrong and being very cooperative and balanced. And I think you've stepped into this energy at some point here in your life, whether that was sooner or whether that was later. And that's what I'm getting for a lot of you who have stepped up into leadership positions. You could be this person who's already rectified this within yourself and other leaders now look to you in order to see how to better lead. It's that kind of a thing. But in terms of this, you either thought that you dominate or you get dominated in relationships. And so maybe this even spreads out in like career versus romantic relationships. Maybe you dominate in a career sense and then you get dominated in a romantic sense or vice versa, however that plays out. But I think you've started gaining some perspective here on this where you're realizing that actually things can be a lot more balanced and a lot more harmonious and it all starts from like within you. So um, you started to really turn that around and people have actually noticed. I also think that, again, um, I think this might be recent where you've started to make you've really, there's a disciplined energy to you where you have really started to be more disciplined around your impulsive energy. So this could be sexually where maybe some of you are doing like a sexual cleanse um, or something. I'm hearing Nicki Minaj abstaining from sex had to zen my body. Um, so maybe some of you are doing that or you're just being like more restricted in um, how and who and when you're sharing your sexual, sexual energy with. I'm just picturing like Sorry, this is a graphic, like, you know, just um, that lubricant, like just kind of building up in the body and like um, actually being a really healing thing, like just within the body. Um, but also this could be some of you, maybe you have been impulsive, like you could lash out with the tongue if um, somebody does something that you don't want. And I think this would have actually been connected to you feeling overburdened and overworked and because you take on so much responsibility and you may actually be delegating more and highlighting these social leaders and people that you work well with to kind of offload these things. So you may have just started to realize, you know, when I get really stressed out, I like lash out and it's an impulsive thing and I really don't want people to feel that way and I'm gonna figure out another way to communicate myself. Um, something here like that. But it's this impulsive energy that I think you've been really disciplined here about. I also think this has to do with the physical body because like you could be um, exercising and eating better because I think your physical body is coming in here and saying, we forgive you because some of you maybe like you work your physical body too hard and you are always like pushing it. And so your body is actually um, because of how you've been treating it, it's been able to get healthy and get balanced. And now is coming in to say, we want to support you in um, meeting all of the goals and things that you want to do here. Now, um, I OK, another thing that I feel like people really um, are appreciating about you is the way that you make decisions, because I think that. Um, some of you could warn other people like you're very loyal in terms of warning people about like the pitfalls that they might not be able to see um, coming ahead in whatever. I think some of you do this for a career, but it's like in whatever arena that you're able to do this, even in terms of love or social could have to do with the body health, something here like that. But you kind of alert people to things that they're oblivious of um, so that they can be more successful. And there's also a way that you um, either give guidance or you make decisions where you pay attention to the details and you also kind of like move slow where it's like, okay, this is like what, what I think we're going to do. And then like you bring it out and see, and you get the feedback and then you adjust as needed. Right. But it's like, whenever you make a decision, you make a decision. Whenever you're sure about something, you're sure. And you back it a hundred percent. Now, um, another thing I think, yeah, like you help people navigate through confusing spaces and through choice spaces and things like that in a way that's honestly productive. Now, um, another thing like this forgiveness energy, I do want to talk about this. Okay. Because I feel like spirit has really been healing this second chakra here for you. I'm just noticing like you've got this orange energy and then within this wheel that looks like a chakra, there's movement. And this movement is coming in the form of purples and blues, which is all like, um, very spiritual energy. This is like the higher chakra. So I feel like you're getting a lot of spiritual guidance and stuff that's going right in and healing this second chakra energy. And I think this is actually tying into forgiveness. And I've kind of said this the whole reading through where it seems to me like you don't quite realize that how much forgiveness here is a part of your own journey and how much you've actually been the, the successes that you've had has been in alignment here with this forgiveness energy, because I think a huge part of your life is leadership. You're learning about either social leadership and how to lead from the back or, um, 
Or you could be learning how important it is to have these social leaders that are balanced and cooperative and um, creative in terms of their problem solving and just holistic and very well-rounded. Um, but however this is, I do think that you are learning about leadership in a type of way. But part of you becoming the leader that you are and that you're meant to be is through this forgiveness energy. But the way that I wanna say this, because I think a lot of you have had this negative influence here in your life, right? That's very tricky with the tongue. And this is the person who we were picking up on a couple readings ago in pile number one, where they use these misapplied fluff words. And forgiveness may be one of these misapplied fluff words here with this person because this is a person who wants to control the meanings of words and I'm hearing Anigo Montoya in my head from the Princess Bride I do not think that word means what you think it means and so this this is a person and I honestly I think I'm supposed to tell you this because my guides are doing a really good job at keeping this energy at bay but for some of you this energy is they do have occult um, powers they do have some kind of like excellent intuitive ability or um, some kind of occult capability. And if you've, that's not going to be for everyone. For some of these people, they're just, um, they are also very observant. And they're, you would know this because I think this person can put on a good show that they're cooperative in a communal space. So they are kind of picking up on things, but the fact that this person is competitive and angry and undermining means that as soon as the leader, probably you, is not looking, they betray people. And this would also be a person who wanted to convince you that I'm hearing that you were nothing without them, that you needed them to be your diplomat, to be your go-between, to be your partner here in something because of the communication social aspect of things. But really, if you really reflect on it, I think that you will realize that you have felt more disempowered and um, more confused and something like that like since this person has been around than ever before. Um, and it's because this person plants little seeds of doubt in your mind and they also lie um, to other people that they're talking to. So you're trusting this person to kind of be a go-between and to be places that you can't be and to advocate on your behalf and to put, you know, to talk about you and your career and your leadership and your projects in good faith. But this person is not doing that. I'm hearing they omit certain things. Um, that they know would make the difference for people in understanding your personality, your leadership, something here like that. They intentionally leave those bits out. They also lie where they don't think that they can get caught because this is a person who lies in pockets. They'll literally tell one group of people something completely different than they tell this other group of people because it serves their own agenda and their own competition there. And so they're undermining you here to these other people. So you're like, I don't really know why and so then you'll go back to this person for advice or for support and they'll be like, well, you just need me even more and you just have to trust me even more. Oh, you really need me. I didn't realize how bad it was that you needed me. And then they keep, they want to betray you. And this person here at this current time could be trying to hoover you back, narcissist word, only take that if it resonates. Um, they could be trying to suck you back in. And I'm hearing, when I said suck you back, I heard succubus. So this person could have succubus energy um, if that resonates, but they are trying to suck you back in using this misapplied fluff word of forgiveness and the thing is you're actually already on the road to forgiveness and that's what spirit's so grateful for and I think there's something about your energy that actually demonstrates forgiveness because true forgiveness is about action it is about changing your behavior which you have already begun doing because when you start to change your behavior there is already built within it an acknowledgement that you understand to a great degree what it is, where it is that you messed up, what, what it went wrong and how it impacted other people. And because you care about that so much, you've started to actually change your behavior. And Spirit is saying very clearly that it would be better for you to change your behavior and not say the words I'm like semantically, I'm sorry to somebody because your action, at least in the ether, is the apology, right? And here with this other person, spirit is saying what spirit wants is for you to end things with this person. They, This is a person who thinks that they're the builder. They wants to convince you they're the builder. They're somebody that you can build with, but they're really the saboteur. And this is a person in order for them to actually be confronted with who they are and to do the healing work that they need to do. They need that to be mirrored and, um, sorry, I'm just like pulling. Yeah. Okay. Cause I think they live in a bit of a fantasy and this person also wants things and they feel like they can get those things through a connection here with you, whether this is a career in some kind of creative field, um, a nice house, something like that. But this is a person who only thinks and their, the relationship between like their, 
the part of them that gets stuff done and the part of them that dreams things, that's it's not a healthy relationship. It's not very strong. So instead they want to just kind of like leech off of other people who they think have. But this person may well think that or try to convince you that they're your twin flame or you're, they're your divine partner here in whatever arena. And I will just say this. I think even if this person is you met this person in a work arena or something like that, they still want to convince you that you're, you need them, that they're your divine partner and that maybe you should consider a romantic relationship with them. But that needs to be ended because this person's a saboteur. This person needs to have that kind of busted here for them because it needs to put them back in this space of limbo so they can actually do some reflecting. Um, on this energy where they think that they're the builder, but they're actually a saboteur. This person doesn't have a good grasp on reality is what I'm getting. And so that's why they give such terrible advice. But I think they're really good at word salad. And that's what I mean back to this like word salad in misapplied fluff word of forgiveness. This is a person who wants to control forgiveness. So even though spirit is coming in and saying, I'm so glad that you've actually started down this path of forgiveness. And I think this is broad, like um, you're starting to forgive yourself for your own, um, I'm hearing ignorance, like the things that you didn't know about how you were affecting other people in relationships. You've started to forgive this father figure because I think you've gotten some perspective on how difficult it has been for this father figure to, um, like that they were just as lost and confused as you were and that you're, you're just glad that you can see it and that the baton has been passed to you and you can change this around for the people in your remit because I think that there are people who depend on you. And you might even be working on forgiving this person, but it's all in action. And sometimes I think you might need to break things off. That's, you know, if you do feel this person's a narcissist, that's how you have to do it to like really fully. I know that there are situations where people can't do it, but that is the clinical textbook way of like, no, you've got to get away from them because it's nothing but schemes and games. And if the wound is fresh, it will never heal. You've got to get yourself out of the situation. So this person may be, and this might be what they're saying to other people, like just this, this nonsense, this word vomit, where they're trying to paint you as this unforgiving person that harbors resentment because you haven't forgiven them. And the thing is you have forgiven them, but what they mean by forgiveness is that they have complete and full access to your life in the way that they want. It's controlling, it's selfish and it's controlling, which I feel like is this person's MO, but they want to be able to define forgiveness as you forgiving me means that I live in your house, sleep in your bed, can call you all the time, and that you have no boundaries with me. This is a person who does not like boundaries. And I think you would have learned this um, slowly over time. They don't respect boundaries, but they do this word salad, misapplied fluff words, let's forgive um, kind of a thing. And, and they want, cause this person is trying to infiltrate this reading for me to tell you that people, what people appreciate about you is this partnership with this other person. That's not true. That's what's actually destroying your relationships with people. It's, it's keeping you small. It's making you feel underconfident. And this person also wants me to tell you that people, um, are grateful for you because, oh, you forgive in this weird misapplied fluff word way that they, um, that they want, that they believe this word forgiveness should mean because that benefits them. This person doesn't care about you because it's actually very healthy for you to move away from them and work on forgiving them in your own heart and in your own soul and recognizing that they're lost and that they're on their own journey and that they need time to figure it out. But you can't be anywhere near it because you're just going to get sucked into the undertow too. And that's just unintelligent. To do that is just unintelligent. But this person wants to put you in a position where you either have to be unintelligent or um, be seen as compassionate. They want to be the arbiter of what's compassionate and what's not compassionate and what's cruel. So they want to be able to define your energy here. All the more reason to move away here from this person because they're tricky. They're very tricky, tricky here with their words. So any... Um, any place that you have been, any groups where this person is is able to taint your reputation, I would move away. You know, um, honestly, I would, and start to build. At, you at least need some groups that you can just be yourself and have proper mirroring because this person will always lie on your name if it serves them. They really will. So yeah, um, spirit is glad that you're moving away, and also because this means that um, these Venusian types are not going to have to compete and protect themselves from betrayal from this outside influence. They'll truly be safe here in your energy. I think a lot of you maybe provide jobs for women, provide um, um, or creative types 
or these like cooperative types, that's what you were always meant to do. And you're actually, because you're out, you're rooting out this negative influence, you're actually able to do that. Cause all of your efforts would be in vain here with this other influence there, because you would be doing all this work. And then this person behind your back would be saying hurtful things, making people feel like crap. Um, just undermining all the work that you're doing. So that's why spirit has had, if you've had endings in your life, that's why is because you were being uplifted here by spirit in order, because you were complying and then having this other energy around spirit's agenda is not actually being fulfilled. So spirit has to figure out a way to do it, but I think you're complying with it here and now. So, um, and I just want to remind, like you're a very strong person because I think you were always going to be a target here for people who want to mooch off of other people or who want to use your energy for, for selfish reasons, for their own selfish gain. You were always going to be a target for that. And I think that this has been a big part of your soul lesson here. And you shouldn't, you know, you shouldn't be down on yourself for having soul lessons and for maybe having to learn them the hard way and stumbling around. You are picking yourself back up. So this is progress. This is healing. And this is another thing. It's like you demonstrate you're a person of action and karma means action. So don't worry about your karma. Your karma is good. You're getting your karma here on track, on point. You're doing a, an excellent job because karma is action. This person and their platitudes has some bad, 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 bad karma because they're not a person of action. They, um, I'm hearing all they do is sit back and try to make moves from up in their ivory tower and their moves are all words. This is a word salad -y person who wants to co-opt and corrupt um, words and these words. And honestly, these words, these like spiritual soft words, they're connected with such powerful energies, but they want to use them as a hook in your energy. Can't let them do that. If they're doing it to you, they're definitely doing it here to other people. And this person does want to hurt you. Um, slowly, bit by bit, behind your back, um, cause you anxiety, make you doubt yourself, make you feel like you need them, and you don't. So now that you've got this person out of the way, you can actually start to bring in people who are truly cooperative and beneficial and who can bring up the atmosphere and the tone to the vibrational level that is required for you to do your work here in the world. And you're on your path to doing that here, um, pile number two. And spirit doesn't want you to forget that. Spirit wants to acknowledge the road that you've been in. You've dealt with some hard situations. I think you've been feeling it. So it would be just disingenuous for spirit to be like, and you're doing such a great job to not acknowledge that. You have felt stuck. You have felt disempowered here for a long time. It's the manifestation of this authority complex around you that you are dealing with. It might've been slow going. You might've, you know, felt, man, this has like been a real painful ending, but you've done it. And you making final decisions on people and places, because you might've had to make a decision to move away from a work environment like this, especially if you are the social leader type person, this, like this, your boss, like I know we've been getting this like very specific um, storyline where a lot of you have had to move away from a work environment because of everything that I've just described that that situation was playing out. But this boss person, this leader person is starting to realize that you are the person that they need. It's your type and you are the I'm hearing that you're their type. Maybe that's like a thing, but they're starting to realize that you're the type of person they need around to have the environment and the atmosphere that they want in order to have this creative, loving, cooperative environment that they want around them. They could even be wanting to seek to court your forgiveness. And if you are this person who's trying to court forgiveness here for somebody who has moved away from you, and this is like a final ending, some of you may be asking um, specifically what this person's grateful for about you. And it's like, they see all these like strong things around you, but because of this corruptive influence, they kind of feel like it was BS, you know, and that you were just after money and like you were just kind of a straw man or a straw person. You wanted to pretend to be something that you weren't so that you could get ahead in life. And so there has been some level of um, not believing you are like just thinking that you're maybe a tyrant or trying to get ahead in life. And so you'll use pro social skills in order to do that. But um, this person is kind of at the moment, they're glad that it's over and that they don't have to deal with it anymore. But spirit is saying, if you're trying to court forgiveness, cause this could have been a big motivating factor for you turning around your life and everything. This is not a person who will accept these uh, misapplied fluff words, like at all. There's zero tolerance. They would pick up on it right away. Um, 
So by you actually taking the steps and the actions to turn this around, and if this influence is going to be gone and out of your, not just in this one person, but this influence in your company and in the decisions that's being made around you. And um, if this influence is gone, you, you know, the actions that you're going to be taking are going to be of a different vibrational quality. And that's what this person's actually going to respect. And that's when they'll actually be able to truly forgive you. And so spirit is saying, if that's what you're asking about, you are on the path to reconciliation and to forgiveness here with this person. It's a longer path because you got a real one here. And um, that's not just, because if you had this like misapplied fluff word thing and you're like, do you forgive me? They would be, they're a nice person and they would be like, yeah, sure, sure, I forgive you. But then they'd go their separate way. They wouldn't be around you anymore because they would have just said it to placate you and to make you feel better about yourself. But then they still wouldn't want to be around you. Do you know what I mean? So you're, you're rest assured that you're on that path. So this has been such a long reading. Um, there really is a lot here to be thankful for in regards of your energy and especially your soul journey. Um, you're really, really coming around, but people find you to be interesting, creative, innovative, um, having a knack for bringing things back into balance and harmony, having a knack for making the hard decisions. Um, like creating some kind of long-term plan and really sticking through it, helping people navigate confusing, um, difficult situations where there could be things going on behind the scenes that they are unaware of or, or don't really know what to do with and helping them navigate like their different choices here in a situation, maybe being an early warning system that something could be going wrong. Like there's a lot of diagnostic stuff here, like whether you're doing that like with a plumbing system where you're like, if you don't address this, you're going to have a problem or if this is like in the physical body or with social relationships, um, something like that. I think that you are really good with responsibility. You do work really hard and people feel like you help them navigate spaces that they couldn't um, themselves. I think that people think that you're a good leader or that you would make a good leader and that um, like you have this really healthy authority energy. And for some of you, you just started to really turn this around here now in terms of your own um in terms of your own life um, and your own energy and, and doing things differently than your father is what I'm hearing um, or other authorities because this also could have been companies that you worked for, leaders that you worked for that were really corrupt and overworked people and didn't value people and um, were very authoritarian and you've actually internalized those things and started to become a different leader and it makes the difference. You make the difference for people here. Pile number two. So... Um, let me just see. Yeah, I think you you may help clear up doubt for people in some way. Um, and yeah, I think I'm going to leave that there for you guys, pile number two. But there is a lot to be grateful for in regards to your energy and the progress that you've been making. And even though I feel like you've been in a place where all the effort that you put in, it's not showing fruits yet, you know, just here in the material world as of yet. And I think you've been making these series of decisions that are in a really healthy, cooperative, balanced energy. And I think that you're like, you've got your head down and you don't exactly feel like happy doing it. I think that you are connecting, you're going to connect here with your own power and spirit sees you just being at the beginning here um, of some kind of long ascent. And there may need to be some things that are revisited in the past in order to clear up confusion, figure out any corruptive influences um, here for yourself in order for you to get your wish fulfillment and to change this fortune energy around on some kind of really strong skill set that you have here. Because I think you've been around a saboteur that you thought was a builder. And um, but now and you have a lot of hopes and dreams and things. So maybe you were looking at the future and not in, in the minutiae in the now. You you were kind of under the influence here of this corruptive um, Ill, ill intentioned advisor person, and you gave them a lot of power and room that you shouldn't have, but you're learning all of that. So I'm going to stop there, pile number two. If that resonated, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Bye, guys. Yes.
pile number three, why are people so grateful for you? Listen, I'm grateful for you and I have never even met you face to face probably because this is the exact kind of energy where you really do need this energy that you carry into the world if you're going to have a society that is in any way healthy and functioning and adaptive and ever changing in order to keep it honest and to keep it productive and to, to keep it benefiting all of us who agree to partake in society because without healthy functioning societies, it's like we might as well all be living in the mountains on our own, but that's like a really hard thing to do, which is why we have societies together in the first place. So I feel like you're kind of like, um, the way that you live your life and your ideas and that the things that you say really helps people to, it, it jolts people awake and it helps them to start to reflect on whether or not the way that they've been told to do things and the way that we've always done things, if it's actually the best way to do things or if we can actually start to shift and change things in a certain direction to make it better um, for everybody. I would describe your energy as divine rebel energy, honestly. Um, and I'm seeing the rebel card in the Caroline Miss archetypes deck. And on that card, it says rejects spiritual systems. But honestly, with you, it just rejects any systems that do, does not serve inner needs. And that's something here that you do. And I think that you are probably, you're a very deep thinker. You're deeply reflective and you're also very pragmatic. But I think that the pragmatic side of your nature kind of gets overlooked because there's a pragmatism to, does this do what it says on the tin, you know, in regards of society or any systems that make up society? Does it actually accomplish what it says it's gonna accomplish? And if not, then let's look at it and figure out how we can like tweak things in order to, make sure that it does do that. That's a pragmatic thing. But I think that um, especially people who are like in positions of power, but they maintain their power by maintaining the status quo. And whether that is, that could be on whatever scale, you know, whether it is like a, a business or a community or like all the way up to like global politics, those people are invested in keeping things the same. And so, um, and not only that, but there are just also, people who find comfort in routines and stuff. So they, they have different like value sets, you know, where they would rather something not work quite as well, but just kind of keeping it the same for, you know, consistency's sake. But I think those people want to overlook how pragmatic your observations and your input really are because they want to brand you this like rebel rouser. So for a lot of people who feel the same way you do, but I feel like it's like really buried because they're too afraid to really look at it and to, to actually live a way that is um, contrary to how they've always been taught that they were supposed to, or the way that society tells us we're all supposed to live in order to get respect and in order to get, you know, resources and stability and things like that. But there's something about you where you're Uranus, you're the enlightener. Um, and it, Uranus is like a lightning bolt, it comes out of nowhere and it just like really hits the right place. And I feel like you're, you have this way where you might just say something, it's like the right thing at the right time for somebody and it really does hit somebody's eighth house. It lights it up, it sparks it up because the eighth house does rule over fears. I also feel like I'm picturing somebody in a work environment where you, I'm hearing like you're a really good friend and that's the other aspect of this, like you really do care about people and you are a good friend. So you're observant, like I'm, I'm getting this, like take this however it resonates in your life, but I'm seeing somebody like in a work um, situation and somebody here is like quietly working and they're diligently working and maybe they're working even like very skillfully, but they're quiet and you can kind of sense that they're not happy and that they're kind of like brooding. And so you say something, you know, or you're like, be like, get real with me, you know, like you're not happy here. Um, or like whatever, like you can actually talk about it with me. And then this person's like, yeah, well, my dad said that I had to do this because blah, 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 you know? Um, and like I'm hearing for some of these people, it's like, because they're, they're told that they're supposed to be the king or queen of pentacles. Or for some of these people um, that I think you've had an influence on, they may be, they may have to play the game in order to get some kind of like inheritance or something like that. Um, or again, just to be like seen as successful. And I think a lot of these people have creative dreams or creative talents or gifts or something like that. And they have a dream of going independent and not having to just like slog it and, um, you know, keep, keep things that are not working for them. But whenever they think about it, it's like they feel anxiety, but I think that there's a, you are like the light here in the darkness. Like look at all this sun energy, sun, sun, sun. 
where you um, encourage them to release any beliefs that no longer assist in their soul's growth and that it's okay for them to admit that they're not satisfied here by like the same things. Cause I think a lot of these people that you've made an influence on, they're like going about the motions, but they're secretly like so sad and they're so depressed. And you know, it's like, why they they kind of have this question that you might kind of, I'm hearing, I think you pick up on it like a dog whistle. Like it's just kind of always in your space, you know, of like, why am I doing this? 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 You know, because I'm miserable. Yeah, sure. I have all these things, but like, really, I'm actually miserable on the inside. But this is a part, like, I think these are people that don't want to seem ungrateful and they don't have like maybe all the answers to all of like the things that they find issue with, or they, they can't, it's like so overwhelming for them to kind of even try to piece the thing together. But it's like, just start with where you feel and releasing any beliefs that no longer assist your soul's growth. Cause once you can let that go, then all of a sudden you can start to kind of figure the rest of it out. And it could be that you are living this kind of a life here yourself. But um, I think that there are people who are afraid um, really to go their own way. And there could even be a sense that you take care of people like this or that um, you are aware of places that take care of people like this or encourage this kind of a thing. Or like maybe we could all like, you know, live more communally or something here like that. Because there's a sense of like there being a group of an energy, an acceptance of people's weird around you. And that maybe you, your version of family is like the Island of Misfit Toys where everybody who comes there, it's like, well, I just kind of find myself a little not fitting in, you know, but everybody kind of becomes family like around you for that reason, for that reason of like, okay, I'm going to finally start to look at my real self here and I actually like together we can. I'm here and together we can. Um, because I think a lot of these people look, I mean, you've got the six of wands, which is an image of success and legacy, and they're all pointing at this one person here who um and their little ace of wands, they're like their creative ideas, you know, followed by the knight of cups. This is like again a very creative energy with the shark under it. It's just an emblem of independence, and it's because they feel like very, very anxious and they have all these plans and I feel like maybe they spend their time like coming up with plans but then they never really initiate it because they're like what if I fail and then I'm gonna get out of the rat race and then I'm gonna you know be ostracized but you make them realize that there are other people like them you know that kind of a thing um and like your six of pentacles is Happiness, you know, this is, for me, this is, you know, it's moon and Taurus. That is an, uh, an exalted moon placement. Moon being emotions, what fulfills us. Um, and moon is also a symbol of like mothering. And I think that some of you guys are very tender and, you, you know, you have this, this is like beautiful rebel energy because it's nothing like the thing that, you know, society tells us that rebel energy is. It's like rebelling for kind of no reason. I think that there's an aspect to you, again, it's deep thinking, it's pragmatic, but it's also nurturing and very motherly and, and you care about people's emotions and how they're feeling. And I think a lot of people, you know, there's, I, I, and I think you have a good balance with it, right? Because you can't also think only about your emotions and then completely ignore your pragmatic needs, just like Maslow's pyramid. You know, you have to think about your physiological needs, your safety, security needs, your stability in the world. You do have to kind of think about that. But I think that there's something here where it's like you blend that together and maybe you even provide a sense of emotional security or safety or something while people are starting to take these steps. This also kind of reminds me of, um, you know, like when people escape Amish communities and um, there's like the guy who did it 20 years ago and he started his own construction company and now like he just, it's kind of known that if somebody's leaving, they can come stay at his house and he's got a room and a bed and helps them get up on their feet and they can work for his company. You might even do something like that where it is actually very pragmatic. Um, you know, or again, you've, you kind of know, you know, the people who do that, you know, the underground railroad, and you can point people kind of in that direction, you have that energy to you. Um, and you help people move away from like difficult times in in and difficult emotions, in whatever that is, things that have been a functioning dysfunction, right in our world in their life. Yes, it functions on a certain level. But th these are people who want something different and kind of knew it always, but they were afraid to say it until they were on four different prescription drugs. And then um, had to really like kind of look in the mirror and say like, I might as well try, you know, I'm never going to forgive myself unless I try, you know, or, or something here like that. And you relieve people of their guilt that that's actually something they should be allowed to do. And um, I'm also getting that a lot of you have like bohemian energy. Um, you don't have to dress bohemian, but I am seeing tie dye here and um, I'm seeing 
Yeah, just um, kind of like Amity energy, like from Divergent and people who are just, they're happy, you like the simple things. But again, it's like, these are things that I think a lot of people overlook about you is that you you really wanna get down to basics. You do wanna get back to the simple things. You do you are very pragmatic, you are such a deep thinker and you can also think outside the box too. So you have this like beautiful thing where you kind of bridge the gaps of like thinking about basics but then also thinking about outside of the box. And I think like Uranus, I'm kind of seeing a spark here where it's like you just kind of throw out little ideas. Well, we could do this, we could do this. And it's like nobody's taking the time to, you know, bring those ideas out to fruition, but it makes people feel like there's hope. Like, oh, we could do it this way. We could do it that way. It kind of reminds me of the book uh, David Graeber wrote called Debt, The First 5,000 Years. Such an interesting book because he's an anthropologist and he talks about um, in modern society, we really think that the way that we do our money system is the only way. Like it's just, oh, duh, we have to do it this way. This is the best way. This is how money has evolved. When he just gives like hundreds if not thousands of different examples of societies all over the world in all different time periods that related to debt and the concept of debt and the concept of money and stuff like completely differently and you kind of like bring that level of awareness in a lot of different arenas and people just this is truly invaluable energy um because it is creative and it does like i said it kind of keeps society honest like okay we're all better off for being in a society. I think we can agree, you know, but there are, there are things, you know, when you read like 1984 or, um, what's the other one? Brave new world. Like each one of them, it's like the world, like blown out in conservative ways, the world blown out in liberal ways. And you can see how it can like get to a place where it's so bad and it's so harmful in either direction. There's definitely tipping points where society could do more harm than good. And I think your energy and people who carry this divine rebel energy in good faith, um, it really helps, it really helps steer society away from that. And you're kind of the canary in the coal mine and you're the early warning system. And even, um, I think like you could have private conversations here with people and you keep them private. And I think that people can explore things within themselves and also topics and things that they haven't been able to, um, quite before because there's a sense of like it they don't have to feel guilty around you for doing it whereas if they these are probably people with very traditional parents or something like that where it's like if they even brought it up they wouldn't be just like even listened to you know or midwife through that process of like yeah I feel the same way sometimes you know I haven't figured out a way to do it differently because you know like I'm saying like their parents thinking like you know I always had to pay the bills and stuff but um yeah I mean I'm interested in having the conversation. I think that'd be really cool. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, um, and you are that place. You are that safe place. And I think you have a lot of ideas um, here as well. And maybe you do. Um, you're also a person who's not afraid to challenge power. So if something's not working for the group, I think you're the first person to speak up like at the work meeting and say, um, yo, everybody has a wrist sprain <laughs> um, from doing this other thing. Like, you know, for however many hours we have to do it, um, can we come up with a different system where we can do that for a while and then switch to another thing? You know, like, is there another way that we can think about it? You don't let people suffer in silence is kind of what I'm getting. If there's something that needs to be brought to attention, I think you do it. And yeah, that might suck for power, but I, I'm hearing like there, you have proletariat energy where it's like the proletariat, all of us, like we love you for it, you know, and you serve like a really, um, you serve a really important function in whatever group that you're in. You really do. And um, I think you have higher ideals and higher um, ideas that you get demonized for because people tell you it's not pragmatic, but your energy is so pragmatic here. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it really does come from a place of love. Like it really does. So, yes, it really does. I was like, I was just being told to pull this Ace of Cup, pure love, you know, and that we can work together and that we can be creative and that we have all the tools at our disposal to be able to um, do some cool things and to do things better and stuff. So, yeah, um, this is the kind of energy I would personally love to see um, in some kind of a leadership position. You may actually, this is reminding me of four in Divergent. That might have been the second time that I've mentioned it. Oh, because Divergent is, um, oh, it's like uh, Chicago after a fictional war, 
you know, and they, that is like a society that's basically collapsed and everybody has to fit into their little factions and you are a divergent and you resist categorization. And I'm hearing that quote, Kate Winslet's character says, there's something beautiful about your resistance to categorization, but it's a beauty we cannot afford. And that's like her being the, um, the lead of erudite. Um, erudite, the, um, the the smarties that think that they should rule over everything, even though it, it's actually the um, the the poor ones that she comes from that are kind of Amishy. Um, what's the name of that? They're the actually the leadership faction because they are like service oriented, but she's kind of like trying to plan a coup, you know. But she's saying this divergent energy is not something beautiful, um, where you're trying to shake up the system, but then it ends up being the key, the secret to the whole thing. And um, that's the energy that you have. But also for in that movie, he is like very talented. He was um, he was picked for leadership several times and he turned it down because he didn't believe in it. He didn't want to like he didn't want to be a part of that um, kind of apparatus. And you may be the type of person that doesn't doesn't want you might be very good at what you do and you get picked for leadership, but you don't necessarily want to be a part of it because you are you don't. um believe in it. And I think you want to do something creative and independent. This is very much like you're an independent artist and you just manage yourself kind of an energy. You have that kind of an energy about you. Um, and you want the same thing for other people. It's also like kind of reminding me of like, um, in Roman society, the Romans would be kind of horrified to find out that we work for other people because they felt like other adults should not work for other adults because you have to then like ask permission to do basic adult things like go on vacation and um, tend to your family and stuff. And they, they kind of viewed that as unacceptable and they, they wouldn't, they would have like, you know, really pushed back on like all the things that kind of made our society that way, like the Walmarts and the targets and, you know, taking things out of the community where everybody had to kind of own their own business. And I think you have that energy where you want everybody to kind of be able to own their own business and make their own rules and, um, you know, something here like that. Um, yeah. And I think you're like this little birdie in the window where when people are feeling sad or they're feeling down, you like kind of sing to them that there's hope and that there's a new day. I really think that for a lot of you, 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 your influence and your voice and just you as an example has really pulled some people out of some dark times where maybe some of these people were really ready to give up, um, permanently, if you know what I'm saying. And they thought that because of you, they could actually, cause it's like, why live like this? That's kind of what I'm getting. Why live like this? Like this is heavy, heavy stuff that people deal with and you just help them. This is beautiful. Um, and you make them feel loved and welcome and functional and a part of things. So that's what I have for you guys. Pile number three. If that resonated, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Bye guys.